Maybe not. There we go. Hey, guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to The Ted Show. We've been taking a little bit of a sabbatical the last month or so, trying to regroup and reorganize. So for those of you who have asked, thank you. And thank you for being patient. And for those guests that have had to be rescheduled, thank you for your patience. But today is about the one and only Gabby Amarato. She is all the way up north in a beautiful place, Boston. And we're going to talk about metamorphosis, what that means. And she's going to perform for us. Welcome, Gabby. How are you today? I'm wonderful. How are you? Thank you. I am wonderful. I'm much warmer than you, I imagine. Um, Absolutely. It's 70-ish and sunny. So God bless you for that crazy weather. But you you live in one of the most amazing cities in the world, in my opinion. So. Absolutely. All right. So enough about that. They want to know about you. Before we went live, we talked about how they love an origin story. So uh, give us a little bit of 411. Were you that type of uh, child that had to perform in front of your parents all the time? Mm-hmm. What was sort of your progression uh, to where you're at now? Yeah, I would say I kind of had an odd uh, childhood growing up to become a musician because I didn't like really want to be a musician. I grew up dancing. So I started when I was three, competitive dancing, like every single form, all the way up till the end of high school. So I ultimately thought I was either going to be in a company or doing something in that realm because I was always drawn to the arts, but I kind of sang as a hobby and I played the piano and guitar as more of like a hobby. And dance was like my ultimate thing. I did 24 seven, seven days out of the week. So it was like, for me, I didn't have the classical training growing up. I kind of tried to do classical lessons on piano and ultimately decided I didn't want to practice enough for that or have the time to practice enough for that. Um, Looking back, I completely regret my mindset on that, but I was a child. So what are you going to do? But I love the stage. Ultimately growing up, I love the stage. I mean, my grandpa who um, was like one of my biggest supporters, he would just see me light up even when I was five on the stage dancing. He's like, you just light up when you hit the stage. And so I love telling a story and bringing music that kind of creates movement. So I started when I was a dancer and kind of just was exposed to all different styles and genres. And I think from there, that's kind of helped me create my unique sound is like, I don't want to fit into one specific box or sound like somebody else. And I think that's so important in today's industry. Um, But that's kind of like how I really started. And then from there, I got an artist development deal with a company out of Florida called 117. And that was when I was 15 or 16. And that's wow, when I- you were young. Yeah, I was crazy young. And it was kind of like I did this like singing competition in New York and I didn't expect anything to come out of it. I was like, I just love to sing and perform. And I like got in the top five and got to perform in front of like 5,000 people in a room. And I was like, put me up there. Like, I'm ready to go. Like, I love to perform. Like, I could work an audience. So I was like, let's do this thing. Like, I had the sparkly costume. I was ready for it. So, like, I did not expect anything to come of that other than just this really awesome experience. And I ended up getting in contact with them. They're like, we want to do an arts development deal with you. I was like, I've never, like, really written music and, like, recorded anything. So I was like, this is an amazing experience. I got to make a music video there. Um, so that's how my seems first- like every teenager's dream would be to do that. It- it, I literally felt like mm, Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus. Like I was like this regular high school girl from that New Jersey. That tells you how old you are. Very good. It, Hannah it really does. It dates me, but like in the best way. Um, because I would be going to Nashville and working on music for like a weekend or like five days. And then I'd come back and I'd have to like go to school. And I was like, all my friends were like, you, <laughs> like it was the weirdest experience. I felt like, like I was living a double life. I was like, this is insane. I was working with crazy producers and songwriters in Nashville. And then I would come back and just go to school and like live my normal life. And it was the weirdest experience, but like in the best way. And so that's kind of how I created my first EP dramatic. And from there, somehow during that process, I think it was like I was recording in the studio and I was like, I could do this for the rest of my life. Like something just connected for me. It clicked, it clicked right there. Yeah, and I think like everybody has that moment about their future where like, this is for me or this is my thing. And I hadn't had it leading up to that point. I was a junior in high school and I was like, I really didn't know what I was gonna do. I had options and I was fine in school, but it wasn't anything that was appealing to me. And I think like in that moment, I was finally like, this is just, this is me writing music, telling stories, um, connecting with people. That was like my forte. So something clicked for me in like the best way. And I just, from there have not stopped. I went, it, let me ask you, Yeah. how does it go? Um, Cause as a kid, right? You've got this passion, you're enjoying it. You also Absolutely. have other, other things to do. What was it like though, when you decided as you got older, all right, I want to do this for the rest of my life, but I also have to adult. Um, Exactly. How did that work out? How did you make the transition? 
Yeah, so that's something I didn't think much of as a child. I was like, this is fun. I'm going to do this. Like, I didn't logically think about it when I was a kid. Um, but after I left that, like, experience or, like, we were done with that, I wanted to continue writing and I wanted to continue working on my craft because I knew that I could write, but, like, I didn't have the skills or the knowledge to kind of – I, like I didn't have the formal training and I think that's what really struggled with me. Um, so I found a Berkeley summer camp and at the time I didn't know what Berkeley was. And it, I'm sure people probably think I'm crazy when I say that, but I had no idea what Berkeley college of music was. I went for the summer camp. It was like a week long writing camp and I loved it. Like fell in love with the environment, fell in love with the people. I went to school with some of the kids who were actually in the camp. That's how crazy, like that filter really works to go to the college. And, um, I remember because I'm like a homebody by heart and I was like, I'm never moving out of home. Like I'm going to go <laughs> school close to home, live next door my entire life. Like I was one of those kids where like, so unrealistic. Um, but other than that, I I never texted my mom for like 24 hours and she's like, everything okay? Like you alive? Are you doing good? And I was like, no, this is great. Like I, I don't need you to like worry about me. I'm having the time of my life. And so from there, that's kind of like my journey through Berkeley and like how I fell in love with Berkeley. And they kind of are what made me realistically look at it from an approach of like how I can make money off of this and make it a career. And there's so many different realms like TV and film writing, writing for music libraries, writing for other artists um, I'm taking musical theater writing minor so writing for musical theater and musical theater films like there's so many different realms you don't just have to be an artist who just tries to perform on the street like there's so many different ways to be successful in the industry and how to market yourself and DIY yourself in the industry today because there are a lot of things that you can do on your own as an artist that I think some people don't know that you can do that or I think, that I think there's a whole side to it because you guys are creative so you get into it and you a lot of a lot of creatives just want to do that creative part when if they Absolutely. spent just a little bit of time developing the business and the entrepreneurial side of music Absolutely. just like you said the sky's sky's the limit there's just so many different opportunities out there especially in this day and age of streaming and everything's exactly. video and everything's live and you can go to 70 different platforms and Sounds and get your fair. message across you keep, you mentioned a couple of times songwriting. Tell me about that. Um, you said early on you weren't songwriting, but you have gotten into it. That is when you when you write a song like for Metamorphosis, um, are all the songs written by you? Do you collaborate? What's the process like? Yeah, so most of the songs I write are all by me. Um, the whole EP is all me, um, just because we're in the middle of a pandemic and I was just like writing music. Um, but I do like to collaborate with other people. I find it super helpful. I collaborate a lot in my classes at Berkeley and I find it fun to bounce ideas off of other people because nobody has the same opinion on one thing. And so for me, I really, really like that because I don't like one thing to say something so specific. I like when people can like take a topic and really like broaden it so that so many people can relate to it. Um, but for me, songwriting um, is like my like journaling or like reading for some people so like even if I'm just like writing down about my day that will turn into a song at some point like <laughs> for me I just love to sit down and write at the piano even if it doesn't become of anything just like that's my therapy for me and so I, I used to do it at a young age but like I have talked about this before and it was not good because I didn't know what I was doing but I used to listen to Taylor Swift and swear I could write music like her so I would write like the story and put random chords to it and it just it didn't work um but after coming to Berkeley which I came for songwriting um I've gained the knowledge to be able to write stuff that I'm really proud of. And I love collaborating with other people, but I feel like for me, sometimes when I'm writing, especially about my own specific emotions or things I've been through, I find it really fun to just like dive into it myself first take, and then I'll like share it with other people and see what they think. But was that, where did, where did metamorphosis come from? What was the impetus behind that? Yeah. So that was kind of my own work. So when the pandemic started, I was like, very alone, um, had a lot of anxiety and was going through stuff. And I went through a really bad writer's block in that period of time where I was like, there's nothing to write about. Like my brain hurts. I am overwhelmed with what's going on right now in the world. And just like, I was like, I don't know when I'm going to be able to write again. Like I was struggling and I had classes I needed to write for. And I was like, I don't know what you want me to do. Like my brain is just not working. And I had a teacher, George Woods, and I like, oh, so much to him. He's an amazing guy. Um, and he just told me, he was like, you just need to sit down and keep writing. And he was like, you could write nine out of 10 things this week. And one of them is good, but he's like, at least you're taking a step in the right direction. And I was like, you're absolutely right. Like I just, 
was putting a wall up for myself. Um, so it's kind of funny that same day I sat down and I started playing around on the piano because sometimes for me, I need like a chord progression to kind of start flowing with what I want melodically and lyrically. And um, I actually wrote Lessons to Learn, like the first verse of it. And I was like, this is so awesome. Like, and I went through and I think I finished the whole song that day or the next day because I just got so inspired. And from there, it just like was a ball that kept rolling. I just need to push it. And then it kept rolling down the hill um, and all the other songs started to flow out of me. And it was just like a really good time period for me because I remember feeling like, am I ever going to get out of this slump? Like both world slump and like personal writing slump. And that song has always meant a lot to me um, because of not only the story, but the fact that it was able to inspire me through this growth and this period of time that I really needed to write. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the crazy. I love that. And also I want to tell you before we go to your, <laughs> to your song, Yeah. Um, you before we went live, I'll just share. I, we were talking about how um, we don't, we haven't had any experience with this today, or you were talking about how you haven't done a ton of interviews. Well, let me tell you, your energy is infectious. Oh, and so you. you're an amazing interviewee. Um, so you, you make my job. I have barely had to say anything. So that is always a good sign. All right. Tell us what you're going to perform for us. Yeah. So I'm going to move you guys over to my performance section um, because I have my piano set up. But I'm going to be performing my song, Lessons to Learn, um, which I was just telling you about. Um, it's the first song I wrote off the EP. Um, I kind of sat down, started writing the chord progression, and I had gone through a breakup uh, not too long before that. And I had a couple of friends who were going through not so great times with boyfriends who were not the best people. Um, and I found that such a relatable topic with... Um, a lot of kids my age where we stay in relationships that might not be the best for us. Um, and so the whole point of this song is kind of like, you know, looking at that from the perspective of, you know, things can always be a lesson to learn and they don't always have to be such a negative thing. I think so many people leave relationships and they're like, that was such a waste of my time. Like I wasted this much time on that person. It's like, no, but you gained so much about yourself and who you are as a person and also how to love yourself and the next person will treat you right. So that's kind of, all combined into the song and it kind of has like a very jazzy flow so i just i really enjoy performing it um all right so yeah, we're gonna let you all right gabby <laughs> amarado is gonna perform here we go in the 
this chapter and I'm moving on A lot easier said than done The bruises and the damage you left will take some time to heal Cause you're a lesson I have to learn Oh my god that was so good thank you so the secret is and if you haven't seen the show before now you'll know i take myself off when you sing because what if you're bad <laughs> and you my don't face would my no. face would, has i one understand time. i have that kind of face me too so i would i one time did it and my friend said god you hated that song didn't you and so i take myself off did not have to with that. That was absolutely beautiful. And you're getting a lot of love on the platforms um, so because much. of it. Uh, just, I, you know, you never know when you talk to somebody and you have that energy. And what, what I loved about that is you absolutely went right into the mode of the song because your energy is very fast, very, yeah. uh, and that's okay. I get it. Um, and, but I, and I love it. But you went right into that song, mellowed it down, got into the mood, and delivered. That was beautiful, really beautiful. I loved it. All right. So tell them the best way they can find your music, how they can find Gabby, how they can follow you, download, buy your music, all that good stuff. Uh, how can they? How can they reach you? Yeah, so I'm on all streaming platforms, so Spotify, Apple Music, even SoundCloud under Gabby Amarado. So just Gabby Amarado um, on all download or streamable services. Um, and then on Instagram, it's just Gabby Amarado as well. Um, YouTube is Gabby Amarado in the process of working on a new music video. So that should be exciting. So definitely stay tuned to check that out. Um, but yeah, everything's Gabby Amarado on all my social medias. So as long as you type that in, you should be able to find me um, right as it says on the screen there. So I like to close with one question. I told you I wouldn't throw you off, but I you, you mentioned this word. Um, you mentioned someone earlier, and I don't know what your choice will be. But when I say the word hero, who comes to mind immediately, and why? I would have to say my mom. That's pretty easy for me. I think she's always um, believed in me and um, pushed me to follow my dreams. So that's super easy choice for me. I know she's not a teacher or anybody, but she's basically been a teacher my entire life raising me. So for me, it's very simple that it's her. Shout out to mom. That's what we want. You guys, if you have something to say like that, say it out loud. Gabby, thank you so much. You were a joy. Please come back anytime and perform. You guys go to GabbyAmarado.com or just at Gabby Amarado anywhere. Uh, on any of the social platforms or on any of the music platforms. And I know you're going to find her. Gabby, thank you so much for being on the show. You were a joy. Guys, we'll be back a little later on. We'll see you soon. Reach out to Gabby. Have a good one.